Hey everyone, this is Nick, and whether you're a Linux user or a Windows user, chances are you've already heard a ton of preconceived notions about these systems, like Windows uses more resources, Linux is faster, or Linux's battery life sucks. And these claims are all pretty subjective, being dependent on your hardware and your use case. But still, we can probably have a more informed opinion by running actual tests on actual hardware. And that's what we're gonna do here. So sit back, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, and we're gonna look at virtually everything. Battery life, disk speeds, GPU power, CPU power, resource consumption, thermals, everything. Including this segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing. Safing makes the Portmaster an open source tool to take back control of your internet connection. It's free of charge and it lets you see every connection every application makes and it lets you act on these connections by blocking ads and trackers, malware, not safe for work stuff, or scams, with auto-blocking capabilities and even the ability to use a DNS provider of your choice. You can, of course, create your own rules globally or per application. Portmaster is available as a DEB or an RPM package, it's in the AUR, or you can also install it on Windows. Using it is free of charge and they have paid tiers starting at 3 euros per month to support the development or 9.9 euros per month if you want the total package, including the SPN, which is a VPN on steroids that uses a different IP address for every connection, so you're truly impossible to track. So click the link in the description to download the Portmaster. Okay, let's begin at what hardware I'll be running all these tests on. I'll use my Tuxedo Stellaris 15. It's a laptop that came with Linux out of the box, but runs Windows just as well. What matters is what's inside. This thing runs a beefy Intel Core i7-12700H. It also has 16GB of RAM and 1TB of SSD. It also has an RTX 3060 inside, which, yes, it is NVIDIA, but that's also a good way to test driver support between operating systems and hybrid graphics as well, which will be the default mode it will run on for all tests. It has a 1440p screen that can run at 60Hz or 240, and I'll be using 60, because 240 just makes no sense for these tests, and I will also run everything at the native resolution without any scaling. The device will be plugged in and charged for all tests so it can use its hardware to the max. Except for battery life, of course. I'm stupid, but I'm not that stupid. Guys, look what I found! Battery life is unlimited when the computer is plugged in! In terms of operating systems, I'll run Windows 11 with all of its updates and the NVIDIA game-ready drivers. And for Linux, I'll run the latest Ubuntu 22.10 with the proprietary NVIDIA drivers on X11 and no other specific customizations to the default. And sure, some distros might be more optimized and I could use a tailor-made Windows ISO to remove things and make it leaner, but that's not what I want to do. What I want to do in this video is compare the very vanilla versions of these operating systems without any customizations applied. Now, feel free to tell me in the comments that I'm dumb for not using something else that would work or perform better. And I will admit, I have some preconceived notions as well, like I'm expecting Linux to do worse in battery life and worse in gaming performance, but be way lighter in terms of resource usage. But we're gonna have to see, so let's begin with the benchmarks. So let's start with resource usage. This laptop I have been using as a Linux Steam console, so it does have Steam installed and some games on the Windows partition and on Linux as well. Still, after install, Ubuntu uses up 25 gigabytes of storage. I installed it on a 700 gigs partition. My home folder uses 394 gigs with Steam and Steam games installed, and there's 280 gigs of free space plus a two gigabyte swap file. So we're left with 25 gigs of used space for the system, including the Steam install and the potential package caches that I didn't empty. On Windows, the install uses 29 gigs, also excluding the users folders and the Steam folder to avoid counting the Steam games that I have installed. And that was my first surprise. I was not expecting Ubuntu to use that much storage. I was expecting it to beat Windows by a large margin. Of course, going longer over time, we all know that Windows has some kind of rot that sets in. It keeps older folders from older versions of Windows so you can go back to them, which means that your disk space is going to get very cramped more rapidly than with Linux, 
but out of the box, they're pretty much the same. As per RAM usage, Ubuntu System Monitor reported 1.9 gigs of RAM used after a cold boot with no swap space being used. On Windows, the system reports 3.3 gigabytes of RAM being used after a fresh boot. Now, how well these two numbers can be compared is up to debate because the system monitors aren't the same application and so they might not measure the exact same thing. Although they both report the cached RAM amount, which means that they probably all report the real actively used RAM amount and the one that is cached for preemptively launching applications, so they start faster. And on that note, Windows reports 4.7 gigabytes of RAM being cached, and Ubuntu reported 3.9. So if we add used RAM and cached RAM, Ubuntu used about 5.8 gigs, where Windows used 8 gigabytes. Whichever way you want to look at it, Ubuntu does use a lot less RAM than Windows, whether it's just pure RAM usage or cached RAM usage. And now is your chance to tell me how your Windows system or your Linux system uses way less RAM than the numbers that I measured. For disk speeds, I used KDiskMark on Ubuntu, which reported read speeds of 3360 megabytes per second and write speeds of 2706. On Windows, I used Crystal DiskMark, which uses the exact same tests as KDiskMark, and got read speeds of 3505 megabytes per second and write speeds of 2782 megabytes per second. Windows read speeds on the same drive felt a little bit higher, but not by a noticeable margin. So there you have it. For resource usage, basically apart from just a tiny bit less storage used by Ubuntu and way less RAM being used, both systems seem pretty comparable. Now let's look at internet speeds. I ran a speed test both in Wi-Fi and plugged in using Ethernet on my fiber connection. Using Wi-Fi, Windows 11 got a download speed of 108 megabits per second and an upload speed of 196 megabits per second. On Ubuntu, the same speed test over Wi-Fi got 154 megabits per second for download speed and 201 for upload. Ubuntu has better download speeds over Wi-Fi than Windows and it's a result I could confirm by just moving the laptop around in my apartment and running the test multiple times. It just works better and it's probably due to the specific hardware and to the driver that it uses for it. It's an Intel AX200 card and it seems to be working really well. Using Ethernet, Windows got 512 megabits per second down and 483 megabits per second up. Ubuntu plugged with the same cable got 508 megabits per second down and only 123 megabits per second up. And that difference in upload speeds between Ubuntu and Windows is huge. And I retried it multiple times. I checked what could be running in the background on Ubuntu, but there was nothing. The performance for upload is just worse. And I could also confirm that result by using Fedora, plugged in using the same cable and got the same numbers. So it feels that there's something on Linux that is maybe throttling the bandwidth for uploads for some reason. But yeah, the results are here. Windows is better for uploads on Ethernet for my hardware, but Ubuntu is way better for downloads on Wi-Fi. On to the CPU benchmark, namely Geekbench 6. On Windows, it gave me a score of 2216 in single core and 10805 in multi-core. On Ubuntu, the same Geekbench 6 got scores of 2494 in single core and 10138 in multi-core. I reran the tests multiple times, but the difference was always around the same between the two. So there is a 3.5% difference in favor of Linux for single core operations, but a 6.2% improvement on Windows over Linux for multi-threaded operations. Now, whether it's linked to drivers or just to the operating system and how it handles this, I have no idea. Now, let's look at some GPU-related benchmarks. We're going to run Unigine Heaven on both operating systems, and that should give us a comparison point for how well they use the GPU. I ran Unigine at high settings in full screen at the native 2560 by 1440p resolution with tessellation and anti-aliasing disabled. On Ubuntu, I got 114 FPS average with a score of 2878, a minimum FPS was around 20 and max at around 202. On Windows, running the exact same benchmark using OpenGL as well with the exact same settings, 
I got 105 FPS average with a score of 2665, which is 7.5% lower, and a minimum FPS of 14 and a max of 219. So generally worse performance on Windows than on Linux using the GPU, but it's running using OpenGL, an API that is not really Windows forte. Running the same benchmark using DirectX 11 on Windows resulted in way better performance with an average of 139 FPS and a score of 3513, but minimum FPS dropping even lower at 10 and much higher max FPS as well at 283. And it's not easy to draw a conclusion here because OpenGL is more efficient and better on Linux than on Windows, but it's also an older API than DirectX 11, which is more complete and allows Windows to take more advantage of the hardware to run that benchmark. This benchmark also gives us a view of thermals with the benchmark reporting 86 degrees Celsius of system temperature on Ubuntu and around 80 degrees on Windows. The fan ramped up a lot more on Windows though, being way noisier than on Linux, with the fans running at max speed the whole time the benchmark ran, making for a pretty unpleasant experience for just marginally better results. But still, to have a better comparison point, let's talk about games. I ran two games specifically on both operating systems. The first one is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, to compare a game that runs natively on both platforms, and the second one is Horizon Zero Dawn, to compare a game running with Proton to it running natively on Windows. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running the in-game benchmark at high details, at the native resolution, I got 80 FPS on average. On Windows, with the same settings, I got an average of 87 FPS, with more stable frame times. Here it is clear that Windows has the advantage, with a 10% improvement over the performance Linux delivers. Now, whether it's from the game being ported badly to Linux, or whether it's from DirectX being better than Vulkan for this specific title, we can't really know that, but what's for sure is that the fan noise was way more aggressive on Windows than on Linux. Horizon doesn't have an in-game benchmark, but playing the same sequence of fighting this Thunderjaw with the game running at the native 1440p resolution at high settings with an uncapped frame rate, I got a little less than 60 FPS on Ubuntu. It mostly stayed at around 55 FPS for the whole fight. On Windows, using the exact same settings and playing the same fight, I got more around 65 to 70 FPS. Although, for some reason, the game didn't have any audio. Not that I would have heard it over the fan noise that went into overdrive on Windows again. And so for this game as well, Windows takes the cake. But that was expected, since Horizon on Linux runs using a translation layer, DXVK, and Wine or Proton which means that the CPU has, and the GPU have more stuff to do to translate the DirectX calls into Vulkan calls that Linux can understand. Still, the performance difference is pretty high, and we could probably test a bunch of other games and see it going back and forth, but generally, for a Proton title, you're not going to get better performance than on Windows. Now, for battery life, I used Firefox on both operating systems and played YouTube videos in a loop until the battery died over Wi-Fi, at mid-brightness, in battery-saving mode, with nothing else running in the background and both devices running in hybrid graphics mode. On Ubuntu, the laptop lasted for 6 hours and 52 minutes before it died, a little bit lower than what I got when using it with Fedora when I did the review on this device. On Windows, it only endured for 5 hours and 36 minutes. And I'll admit, I was surprised here, because I was expecting Linux to fare worse in terms of battery life. Generally, Linux laptops with dedicated GPUs have worse battery life on Linux than they might have done on Windows. But here, the result is clear, and I ran it twice, which took me a lot of time to do. So either Firefox on Windows is super unoptimized compared to its version on Linux, or Windows just handles battery life worse. So where do we stand here? Well. I'm afraid to say it's pretty inconclusive. No OS has the edge in all cases. Now sure, Ubuntu uses less RAM and less disk space, and it tends to have better download speeds over Wi-Fi on my laptop. But Windows seems to use the many cores of the CPU better, has marginally better read and write speeds, 
and generally performs better in games with an about 10% performance difference. Although that performance comes at the cost of your eardrums as the fan blasted to full speed while playing. As per battery life, Linux is the clear winner on this device. And of course, it's just a series of benchmarks on one specific device. Your experience might be the complete opposite on another laptop or another computer, depending on how well it's supported and how well the drivers are written for Windows and for Linux. And you could always find a use case where one of the operating systems performs vastly better than the other. Might it be a specific game or application? But in day-to-day -day use, they're super close. And you can't really point out to any of these specific benchmarks and say this operating system is absolutely terrible for this. Although that is just for performance, for user interface, privacy, and general naggingness of the operating system, Linux is the clear winner. There is not even a debate to be had here. But for the rest of the general experience of using an operating system, they're really very close. Still, this has been educational. And apart from the gaming side of things, my preconceived notions didn't quite hold up. So if you have any comments or any insights on why certain numbers turned out the way they did, let me know down there in the comments. And if you want to run the exact same benchmarks on your own device and let me know how well it went, well, you can also tell me in the comments. And I can also tell you about today's sponsor. If you need a new device and you plan to run Linux on it, stop looking at Windows computers. Buy something that supports Linux out of the box from Tuxedo. They have a big range of computers from laptops, desktops, NUCs, workstations, big towers, small ultrabooks, gaming laptops, everything you might want. They're all very customizable with plenty of options to really make it your own. You can have your own logo, you can have your own custom keyboard layout, and all the laptops are also openable, repairable. You can at least replace the SSD, the RAM, and the battery. And on some, you can even replace the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. So if you're in the market for a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and buy something from Tuxedo. It's really, really better than buying from a Windows manufacturer. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And as always, if you really enjoy the channel, all the links to support me are in the description below from PayPal, Super Thanks, Patreon, YouTube memberships. You decide if there's something you want to contribute to. So thanks everyone. And I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.